All right, guys, welcome, and uh, we've got a special edition here with uh, with Twiggy. Hello, Kessler. hello <laughs> yes. there. And uh, we've done a few of these now, so I thought that we'd hop on. We're um, we're recording this actually about two weeks out of uh, Austria uh, Ironman seventy point three World Championships, and we're um, we're at location Purple Patch. And uh, we were just saying that we have done a few of these because yeah. we've been uh, working with each other for, I think if our math is right, about 12, 12 years. 12 years, that's we? right. So we won't spend uh, today going through our background because uh, we've talked about it so much to each other and uh, to other people. But uh, we do know that um, you've, uh, you've had a tremendous season so far this year, uh, coming off of, I think for both of us, a really disappointing Hawaii last <laughs> yeah. year. And um, and, a, and a great season last year, uh, but the nice thing is, is uh, as we continue towards the latter stages of your career, this year has been fantastic. I think you've won seven races since Hawaii, is that accurate? That's Including right. Including Ironman yep. Arizona, yep. which is, um, and, uh, and I think had one of, if not your best season so far to date, but, um, we, but obviously we, we yeah, have we. had. Um, and obviously we, we move into the... Uh, the final stages of the year we've got lots of racing to do we've got some fun races with austria coming up in two weeks time hawaii coming up in uh in six or seven weeks time and uh and then we still won't be done for the season we're, right. we're going to have a, a few other races but i thought a nice time to check in and um and talk to the purple patch athletes uh, about some stuff that might be uh might be relevant and helpful to them mm -hmm. And uh, I, I thought that how we'd start is a, a little bit different. Uh, and it's something actually that I talk to age groupers a lot about, which is when, when you think about your training mm -hmm. and, and, and preparation for races, when you think about training, what does that mean to you? And obviously it means more than swimming, cycling and running. Right. Well, I, thank you, because you've taught me this is um, oftentimes... People think, uh, even as a pro, that we just swim, bike, run all day, and that's actually n not the case. There's there's a lot of modalities that go into just being a triathlete, and it parlays into being an age grouper, and it's what you call um, us trying to be a pro's pro, and, it, and it's taking the, you know, it's the pillars of performance that Matt created long ago is uh, to talk outside a swim, bike, run, but nutrition, recovery, um, eating in your fueling window, which I am learn to be better about i'm still learning um strength training and all those good things it's truly your pillars of performance uh and so to be a pros pro a proper pros pro and that's also f to be um, a world-class age grouper or a just doing this as a hobby it's really important to focus on those things outside a swim bike run because that's helped me a lot uh to get where we are today mm -hmm. now let's talk about your uh your team a little bit right. and uh, I give credit because mm -hmm. um, if you do well you get the credit and the next person to get the credit is me probably right. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, it's true but but mm -hmm. beyond us I think there are other people around mm -hmm. you that that um, that that deliver a lot into yeah. into you being good and yeah. I think that um, in the different components that we talked about strength and nutrition uh, health and everything mm -hmm. along those lines tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. those people and the roles that they sure. have for you I think it's like when you cross the finish line, you want to like put your arms around. We talked about this before and just know that you have you, you have created your team. You've mastered your team and every single athlete needs to do it. And yeah, you, you get the first credit always as you should, um, 12 years of it. And then obviously there's strength, strength part of it. That's Kate Ligler, who's been a part of, um, strength training for now a couple years, a couple times a week. Uh, and then your physical therapist for me, that's Krista Prado of UCSF. Uh, I call him miracle man. He's helped me with any niggle, uh, from, from a calf pull to a broken ribs to a niggle in my hamstring. So, um, then there's my husband, Aaron, who I've been with also forever. Cause you know, I'm a creature of habit, same coach, 12 years, same, <laughs> same husband for nearly 20 at least. Um, and I said this recently, when I find something I like, I like to grow within it. And so, um, and then obviously Paul Buick and 
huge part of the Purple Patch family. He's helped me a ton on the mechanics of my bike, which I'm not very good at, as we know. Um, so you have this, you take a bird's eye view at your team, and I've said this to you before, that I'm just the technician. And that's why, of course, I feel when the technician doesn't deliver, sometimes you feel that, but then you know your team supports you, win or lose, and that's what's been really great for me. Did I forget and, anyone on the team? I want to make no, sure. I, no, okay. I, don't, I, I don't think so. And um, uh, I mean, you've been very lucky that you've been able to extend out and, and, right. and work with people like the Mayo Clinic on, yep. on some of the stuff yep. previously and, uh, and have a lot of good resources. Sure. Um, and then uh, many of those people, Kate, for example, mm -hmm. is, is sort of a, another rock in your yeah. in your support network yeah, as well. Absolutely. Kate and Janelle as well, which yeah. have been, which I think is is really important for any athlete to have a right. a circle of, of support and guidance. And I think that you nailed uh, the the key component of it, which is it's great when you do well and everyone celebrates. But at the same time, I think that you have a real security around you that if things don't go well, there's no one on your team that's going to look harshly at right, you. Right. It's like we, we, we succeed together and we, uh, and, um, uh, and, and we fail not very often yeah, no, together. And that's the same thing. Let's focus on Paul just for one second, yep. because uh, I, I know that there's going to be an article written on him and, and right. he doesn't like the spotlight very no, much. No, he sure doesn't. Um, for me, is a, I mean, Paul is a guy that actually makes me a better coach, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, he came, came into our setup a, a few years ago now. Yep. Yep. Uh, and, and I think it's fair to say that um, when I first met you, you couldn't ride a bike. No, <laughs> you kept 100%. it upright, but you couldn't Absolutely. ride a bike. And so we really fair. evolved. But I, for me, the, the biggest evolution in, in you as an athlete on the riding component in the last few years has been beyond your hard work, mostly mm -hmm. down to, to his education Absolutely. and really helping yep. you um, learn how to ride yeah, uh, the true. courses how and stuff. How to gear my bike. <laughs> how to gear your bike. And it seems so simple but one of the things we've talked about so much is back yeah. to basics yep. isn't it and Keeping really take, simple yep. do, do you feel so much more confident in your yep. bike now and uh a hundred percent i mean when we first started decades ago it seems it's uh you know i i knew easy gear you know hard gear that's about all and i'm not saying i miss technical but paul has has taught me as a view when we're out on the roads in kona for example just learning the nooks and crannies of how to gear properly when to get out of your saddle when to slip to the small chain ring all those little little nooks have helped really get a far in my way of um riding my bike it's yeah. been a huge huge help and i can't wait to help put spot with you help put spot paul in the spotlight of all the things that he's taught, no, taught he's, you and me yeah no for, for both of us for sure it's it's one of those things that you you realize when you look at, at someone like that that they right. just have skills that, right. that you don't have and that that's a great thing um we like to have you race a lot you like that you'd, <laughs> yeah. you'd race more but uh than, than maybe i mm -hmm. I, I say is okay but um You've, you've already raced uh, yeah. plenty of times this year, more than 10 races. You've won seven of them. Uh, tell me why you, you love mm -hmm. to race and mm -hmm. what that does for you and how that's changed right. over the years a little right. bit, maybe. Well, yeah, if I had my druthers, I'd race every other weekend, but I understand. And as I progress in age in the sport, that it's not always good to do on the body. And it goes back to those pillars of performance and mm -hmm. recovery. But um, the thing is, there's nothing that simulates racing like racing. And I say this, there's there's no other situation. Yeah, we can do our race simulations a week out from a race, and those are so helpful, but there's nothing like with the adrenaline and there's nothing like racing to put you, to sort of set you up for success for the next one. And I learn each race how to set yourself up for the next one. Uh, so so we like to race, right? And we, we learn in there what we can do better, what we did bad, what we failed on. Even in the ones we won, I learn what I did right and wrong. And that's what's been really helpful for us, I think, the last... I think we've raced, you know, I, I like the dicks and dirty doubles, we call them. Those are great a week out. Mm -hmm. um, they are possible. Um, but I've learned where I do need to, like three weeks after a full Ironman, it's not a good time for me to race. And we've learned that, and now we have to rejigger that a little bit. Half's much easier to kind of serial race in. Um, so yeah, there's nothing better than racing um, to get you ready for the next race. And, and we, um, uh, one of the things actually racing can teach you, and, mm -hmm. and this year has been a great example yeah. where I think in, in June and July you won uh, four races in a row I think it was four in a right. row and that actually taught us something that might be surprising to, to people watching which is 
we actually realised that you were carrying a bit of fatigue through there, right. but you weren't very fresh, and right. and it sort of informed a shift of approach in yep. the last few weeks, hasn't yep. it? Because it said, okay, you so managed right. to win, but it yep. wasn't actually that good by mm -hmm. our standards. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. um, you didn't feel fresh, you right. didn't feel on it. I told and you I didn't have my pop, you didn't my have fifth your, gear. didn't have yeah. your pop, and, yeah. um, and so we've really changed from Vineman, yep. really, into, yep. uh, into Hawaii and, and obviously on the way, Austria, yep. uh, the Austria um, 70.3 World Championships, right. we've changed the approach and has that been difficult for you and uh, to, to sort of maybe maybe yep. explain how I've changed sure. it for you and where, sure. what's that, what that's been like emotionally? You know what, I haven't noticed in terms of, because you know me so well and you know I, you've never given me full days off, I don't mean that in a bad way, full days off are great, but I often you know, my thinking time and it's been something I've done since I was, you know, 16 years old. I, I, it's like uh, my chi and, mm -hmm. and such. So I didn't notice you lessening volume, if you will, in August as we gear up for 70.3 because you keep the intensity drip fed in. And that's like, whoo, that was hard. Okay, I'm done now. You know, and you kind of go on to the next workout and you took a bird's eye view and you're like, well, okay, I can't do too much recovery for Meredith because that's her, like she, Look, I enjoy what I do. I, mm. I have a passion like all of you to swim, bike, and run. And so taking a day off isn't that fun for everybody because we love to do it, but we also know we need to do it in order to be better at X race. Um, so I haven't noticed as much that you've slowly drip-fed volume away because you've kindly kept intensity, which I really like indoor on a trainer or on the treadmill going 5% grade. I think you've kept it juicy in terms of spicing up um, the, those types of workouts, which mm -hmm. are actually quite hard. Um, and so I know once we get through 70.3 worlds, you also know I, don't, I personally don't love riding my bike five hours a day, um, five days a week or four days a week. It's just it drains on me where I can do intensity all day, you know, yeah. like that's, and you know that about me and that's where you've learned um, I, that I don't even worry about that stuff. That's, I put that on you and I just do what daddy says. <laughs> <laughs> what I, you know, and the, 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 um, the specifics in my mindset, mm -hmm. so that uh, you mm -hmm. know this and, uh, and uh, uh, but what we've done as we're in the last sort of month or so is we've, spaced out how much intensity there is and in between kept the volume in there but reduced it uh, relative to last year significantly reduced volume uh, way less volume in August than um, than we've done in previous years uh, we're going to do more a little more volume in September than we have done in previous years mm -hmm. and just keep the flash of intensity but the the key much as you would um, for an older athlete, an older amateur athlete in their 45, 50, 55 years of age, uh, have less times per week that you hit really intensity, but make sure those are like a big frying pan right. around the head. You call them boom days. Boom boom <laughs> days for you. And um, uh, you've made that public now, but uh, <laughs> there it is, boom day. And, um, and that's, uh, I think that's, you've really executed well. And what we're, what we're starting to see is a creep up in power on those key days with the really, really low intensity stuff remaining. So we still give you the mm -hmm. six, seven, eight, nine thousand straight, mm -hmm. steady Meredith Kessler swim that no one in the world, uh, uh, no one else in the world would want to do. But we keep that in there for you, mm -hmm. but make it very low intensity. <laughs> so it's uh, it's um, it's fun. And and I guess is that you know you sort of I mentioned sort of yeah. coming into the twilight of, yeah. of your elite professional sure. career. You've got two or three years left, yeah. depending on how many you want. Yeah. Um, is that how is that emotionally for you? You've mm -hmm. you sort of you're a real leader in the sport. I think you're one of the most respected athletes in the sport. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a, a tremendous amount of athletes come to you for help, support, advice. Mm -hmm. Something that you love, I mm -hmm. think, yeah. and um, and and are humbled by. But is it um is it has it been sort of a strange journey to reflect on being the young pupping town that <laughs> went to this pro with uh, and mm -hmm. all the way through now that you sort of on the other mm -hmm. side that you're one of the most established athletes is that a how is that for yeah you? well it is humbling we mean we spent nine years as an age grouper he continues not to count any of my Ironmans I think I had 25 before we met which is smart uh, and then Kona will be number 55 and it's been a cool journey to go from you know 21 years of age just signing up for one after college to here we are you know trying to really compete on this level and so 
yeah, it's humbling. And it's also, since I spent nine years as an age grouper, I've, I want to try to help people. That's the platform that I wanted us to try to create the last X amount of years. And hopefully we can continue to try to do that. Cause it's, it, trust me, if I could do this comp at this level till I was 80 years old, I would, I know, um, you know, the body may not let that for everybody happen. So I'm really trying to relish in this small window of opportunity that we have the next X amount of years and, and capitalize on it. But it's been a really fun ride and you've been on there with me. And and I hope that one other thing is writing the Life of a Triathlete manuals that we did. Yeah, the business side, that's to help future pros, but also the age group manual. And that's what I learned nine years as an age grouper, what I'm still learning after almost 55 Ironmans, four DNFs, you know, that happens. I wish I could say 59, but not quite yet because we learned from those DNFs and they actually helped helped us become better for the next one. So that's for been sure. good. Uh, and you, I mean, you're also really immersed in the in the age group athletes and a lot of your training partners are yeah. male age group yeah, athletes yeah, yeah. with, yeah. I mean, particularly Rich, who yeah, sure. I think that you should have 50% credit with me on uh, on. Right. Uh, on him becoming double world champion last right. year because he does most right. of his training with you and has learned a lot. Right. Um, so he's one of my marquee inner circle that I, I didn't mention. He also, you and him get should get your own little section is mm -hmm. uh, Rich is like efficient. He's a CEO. He's like all the age groupers and, and he's world champion, father to manages a tri team and what's great is when we train, we train hard and it's efficient and then we evacuate to life. and. Also, he humbles me every day. I get crushed every day. I always believe train with people just a smidge better than you. Not saying he's more than a smidge, but I'm mm -hmm. saying uh, to help, you know, get you to that level. So that's what we've been doing. And he's a huge part of the inner circle. He has. And what he's done with Team Everyman Jack right. is, is, is really impressive. Everyone knows I mean, what Everyman Jack is. Yeah, yeah. So it's great. Anything else you want to tell him? No, I just want you all to just you know how i am about balance and i just really believe in this sport there's a way to keep your chi i'm all about as matt knows why he gives me my mbk swims about you know keeping your chi and being balanced and you can go out and have that piece of pizza and a beer as long as you keep in the fueling window and all that good stuff but just keep it super even killed get your training in that's why we love working with matt he listens to and that's why i've been with him for so long he listens to what um, is part of your life and he adjusts around that and even as a professional watching me go from working uh, full-time to professional he's adjusted still my life to keep that that like desired balance that we all strive for so I'm very thankful um, and my last thing related to that but uh, as an as how that carries into the swim bike and run component mm -hmm. is uh, as people often ask me and um, uh, how does she do it? How does she? How is she so consistent? How is she able to sort of continue to improve and just keep getting better year after year after year? And if there's one thing, um, uh, and and I tell you this, it's not how much sleep she gets, and it's not how good she is at fueling, uh, because she's uh, she's mid level at the at an amateur level on that side of stuff and getting better. But um, but it's not that stuff. It's um, it's something that's actually very very simple beyond having. Meredith's word, massive gumption, uh, complete passion for the sport, just the pure enjoyment of it. From a training standpoint, the one thing that I think is a differentiator is having complete balance on workouts. If she has the best session that she's ever had, at the end of that session, you eject into life. Mm -hmm. And if it's a session that is a web session, web. <laughs> why even bother? Yeah. Uh, it's ejected afterwards, and it's something that we look at, and then move on. And the next day, it's the next session. The next mm -hmm. session, it's the next session. And we don't dwell. We don't dwell. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we don't dwell. And, I, and I'll never forget the first year that um, that you became US Pro Champion mm -hmm. at um, uh, at St George. On you know, you raced. You had this big breakthrough. You won at a major championship race. And the next day, you flew back. And the next morning, you're up at early morning swim at five thirty in the morning already a thousand yards in by the time I got there and that was it it was like nope we're moving on because uh, we've got I don't remember what we had but right. in three weeks time we're on another race sort of thing right. and it's it's the enjoying the ex the the excellent results as well as uh, not dwelling on the the results that we have had challenges on yeah. and it's that continual embracement embracing the journey that is uh, that right. is really it that's tied the fabric of 
of my magic word consistency. Yep. So, um, all right, well, thank you very much. You're I really welcome. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me, and good luck to everyone racing, and I hope to see some of you all at the uh, next couple of races over the next six months. Rock and roll. Cheers.